リバーこのセッションの座長を務めます大栗大学の高岡と申しますよろしくお願いしますえっ、ー、とえっ、ー、と,、えーと,えー、とそれではですね次の、えー、とトークは、えー、とドクター・マルヘルケンスの、えー、ウィスン・インタラクティブ・ミュージックというタイトルで、えー、とドクター・ヘルケンスが、えー、最近、えー、と作りました、えー、3つの曲を中心に、えー、とその曲で使ったその技術的なえー、とことですね、えー、と例えばその、えーとえー、と音響合成の方法であるとか、えーとイ、インプリメンテーションの方法であるとか、そうした内容について、えー、と話します。で、えーと、3つの曲っていうのは、えー、とちょっと最初にサマリーを、えー、と皆さんに、えー、とお伝えすると、えーとですね、最初は、えーとえーとえー、と彼女は、えー、と現在、シンサティ大学。プロフェッサーで、新生水大学のコンピューター学センターの所長でもあります。で、ちょっと簡単な経歴をえっ、ー、と申し上げると、えっ、ー、と彼女はですね、コロンビア大学で、えー、博士号を取りまして、で、まあちょっと個人的なことを申し上げると、えー、ちょうど私が1990年にコロンビアの大学に入った時、彼女はコンピューター学の助手でして、で、なのでまあ私ずっと自動作業をやってますけど、あの私が初めて水源号で書いた。自動作業プログラムが彼女の指導によって、えー、書いたプログラムです。で、えっ、ー、とそれからですね、えっ、ー、とで彼女はですね、その自動作業とともに、えっ、ー、と特にグラミラシンセスですね、えーえー、それそのえっ、ー、と最初期の頃からえっ、ー、と素晴らしいソフトウェアの開発を行っていまして、えっ、ー、とそのグラミラシンセスはその彼女の曲の中で非常に重要な位置を占めています。で最初に彼女が、えー、とお話しするのは、えー、と最近まだ現在進行形の曲でしてでこれは「西洋」というタイトルの曲でこれはシンセナティ大学の建築家と共同で制作しているインスタレーション作品ですでこの作品ではですね、えー、と例えばあの虫の大群がですねあのその全体となって初めて、えー、とその現れるような行動ですねで。それを記述する理論を使って、えー、音を操作したりでそれから、えー、とグラフィックスを操作したり、えー、しています、えー、とそれからですね、えー、次に、えー、と彼女が、えー、と2016年に、えー、と行ったオーストラリアへの旅行に基づいた作品ですでこれはタイトルが「えー、と From Australia」という曲で彼女はですね、オーストラリアで収録したさまざまな音が使われています。えー、っと、それでですね、えー、っとこの曲をえー、っと、えー、この曲はですね、えー、っと iPad を使って複数の奏者が、えー、同時に、えー、あの演奏します。で、その時に用いられる、えー iPad のインターフェースについても話しますそれから最後にですね現在彼女が行っているコラボレーションの一つでニューヨーク大学のエスタエスタラメンエスタラメンというプラネットとタロガト、タロガトっていうですね、ちょっとプラネットに似てるんですが、プラネットよりも,もっと大きくて、ちょっとサクソフォンに似た音がするを出す楽器なんですけど、そのまま演奏家と行っているコラボレーションについて最後に話します。で、えっ、ー、とこの曲はですね、えっ、ー、とですね。
信者システムのインストールメントを書いていますで、えー、とそれで最後の,その曲では、えー、そうした彼女自身が書いた、えー、アルティシミックインストルメントが構成した音を素材として使ってでそれをですね、マックスによってコントロールしてるわけですが、してるわけですが、そのマックスパンチについてもお話しします。えー、ということで、えーと、彼女は話すことがたくさんありますし、で皆さんの中にはそのグライナーシンセシスとか自動作曲について結構持っている方がたくさんいらっしゃると思うので、えー、と今回はですね、まあ、通訳なしであの、最後まで、最初から最後まで、えー、彼女にお話してもらいます。Thank you very much. He will be organizing your, your next meetings, so I'm sure it will be very capable hands.、Um, well, it's a, a real joy to be here in, in Tokyo, and、uh, please bear with my lack of Japanese skills. So I will try to speak slowly, and if you don't understand, please let me know. I'd be happy to explain anything. And,、um, okay, so、um, I'm a composer,、uh, often for the works for computer. Once in a while, I write a piece for instruments, but usually it involves technology.、Um, I've been get, getting interested in installations, multimedia collaboration, especially for a long time. I'm in collaboration with others in all different fields.、Um, I'm a programmer of music software for composition and improvisation, and、uh, I teach at CCM at the University of Cincinnati. And,、um, Composition, computer music mostly.、Um, so I、um, did my work at, graduate work at Columbia University and the University of Illinois.、Um, I've been involved with several organizations like the International Computer Music Association. I was the president and on the board of directors for about 10 years.、Um, also with the、uh, U.S. organization, s h a n u s Other instrument, other interests are deep listening. Paulo, you know, very steep listening.、Um, tennis. I'm an avid tennis, tennis player. That's how I broke my wrist. And、um, Tai Chi Chuan and gender issues. I've been interested in gender and computer music for a long time. So, interactivity. Well, a lot of my works have been fixed format for many years, but、um, it, it recently, especially in collaboration, especially, interactive performance has been very stimulating. And it often,、uh, for me, the source of inspiration in an interactive piece is the sound of the performers, or it might be natural sound or some other sound sources. Is this speed okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay.、Um, in collaborative works, when I'm working with someone else, often we are doing a, something called a, a structured improvisation. So it's improvisational, but it's also got some prearranged structure. So we have the best of both worlds. We have a lot of Uh, you have a lot of freedom in your performance, but you also have a plan, and it sometimes makes a more successful、uh, outcome that way. It's also very listening based,、um, which seems like it might be obvious, but I don't think it is always. You know, with musicians, that listening is so intensely important.、Um, I've done some work in interactivity with wireless sensor networks.、Um, I'm not going to play it now, but、um, it kind of relates to the installation a little bit in,、um, in that there are, we used groups of sensors around a space and then they would interact with each other and send data to each other. And so, therefore, those things would control parts of the performance.、Um, for example, in the Waterbirds piece, where、uh, infrared sensors were triggered by the performer's movements. And, um, and gesture. Also, another area of interactivity that I won't have much time to talk about, which is internet performance.、Um, I, don't know if you, I don't think you have internet to be here, but in the US and some other locations, we have very high, high, fat, high bandwidth internet, which will allow sending huge amounts of data across. So,、um, the music language that I work with、um, allows you to send. Data over the、um, internet for remote sites. So, for example, I did a performance recently with my SoundMesh software that、um, 
was done at Stony Brook University in New York, and we had a network music festival. Um, there were people in Cincinnati, my students were sending sound to the festival, and sounds were being generated in Stony Brook and sent back. And it was a very interesting improvisation based on uh, wildlife sounds. So um, that's another area that I think interactivity is really appropriate for. And, uh, the nice thing about an internet performance like that is it really focuses you on listening. Um, instead of trying to, um, sometimes when people are in the same room performing together, they might work off visual cues, like eye contact and things like that. S solely uh, listening, which, which can be really interesting. It forces you to listen very, very carefully. Okay, the first project, I'm going to talk about three different pieces. And the first one is called Serio. It's in a it's a work in progress at this point. And it's an architectural collaboration. Um, it will be an installation with sound. And Christoph Klemt is my um, collaborator, who's an architect at the University of Cincinnati. He's done a lot of very prominent installations around the world, really, in Europe and other places. Um, and this, this one is based on the rules of emergent behavior. This is sort of collective systems, such as a swarm or flocking algorithms you may have heard of. And so, in this case, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, you have these behaviors found in collective living systems such as swarming bees, ants, flocking birds, and schooling fish. So it's a bunch of agents which move around according to certain rules. This installation uh, will be an aluminum structure, and it's based on these uh, swarm coding aspects. And um, the algorithmic musical composition is linked to the physical structure. Okay. Um, our plan for this is to have it at the Cincinnati um, Contemporary Art Museum, which will Contemporary Art Center, CAC, and we're to talking with them, but it may be somewhere else too. Um, we're also doing a virtual reality version in the Unity 3D uh, game engine. So, that's because we can't bring this installation all over the world very easily, but we can make a virtual reality setup and have it work that way. And there are, of course, nice things about that is it's a little more flexible. Um. <clears throat> okay, so um, the rules I'll just briefly talk. There's a, a famous example, Boys, which you may or may not know of, um, by Craig Reynolds. And this is just an excuse to talk about the rules. There are three basic rules. Um, there's also other additions that we can do, but we're focusing on this to start with. Separation. So there's a, a bunch of agents, a collection of agents. They, to avoid crowding too much, they, start, they separate from each other. Okay, that's one rule of force that's acting on each agent. There was also alignment. Alignment means they're steering towards the average heading of the local flock mates. So if there are all these flock mates that are moving in a particular direction, they <coughs> steer toward that average direction. There's also cohesion, which cohesion, which is kind of like alignment, but it's also uh, more like steering toward the average position of the group. So, and these are just the local groups. So they're influenced by their local agents that are around them, and less so by the, the ones that are farther away. So we can see it. Uh, here's just this still. Can you see that? Anyway, this is just one still. I can show the um, and processing this code is running. Here's the code. You have functions for separation, cohesion, and alignment. And then if I play this, the processing, this is just a very simple example, but it gives you an idea of a blocking algorithm. They start all in a clump, but they're separating. Oh dear. So you can see how they're kind of moving apart as a group. 
Let me just start it again. I don't think it's very visible. And it'll be completely different this time because um, it'll go in a different direction. There's a lot of randomness to it. So they start in a group, and they're, they're not on top of each other. There's a separation. But they are moving in groups in certain directions. So this clump is broken off. It's not influenced by this group anymore. Um, and this is not influenced so much by that group anymore. But you can see how they move according to these three, uh, three rules. Does that make sense? Um, so this is, like I said, very simple code, which we have worked with to create our, our work. Um, okay, here's a prototype image of the architectural structure. Oops. And you can see how there's sort of vectors of, of uh, lines, and this will be an aluminum structure. And it's a very complex structure. Okay. Here's another version. So I tend to make these um, linear uh, projections, which actually I don't know how to describe it, but that pictures work more words than the words I think to describe it. Um, okay, so what is this? Okay, so the saddle component. I'm using a, the RTC Mix Mesh 2D um, program, which is uh, a Mesh 2D is a, a 2D mesh is sort of like the idea of a flexible metal sheet from which you can strike in various places, and um, the waves propagate out from the place that you struck it. And it gives a very interesting kind of metallic sound, and I thought it would be appropriate for this. Um, there's traces of the physical structure heard in the sounds. Right now, I'm using the algorithms, which are not exactly um, as closely mapped to the flocking algorithms as I like, but that's, like I said, it's a work in progress. Also, I'm using, using the modal bar um, sound, which is um, going to be used, which does a sort of like a a marimba bar or a vibraphone bar where you can strike. And depending on where you strike, the sound is affected. Okay, so. Uh, Alright, so. Yeah, let's take a look at this. A little bit about RTC Mix. I think you said something about RTC Mix. Oh, very little. Um, it's a music programming language, and the digital signal processing techniques in it are very helpful, at least in my work. And um, it has both the flexibility of C and C++ programming, and it allows you to create instruments or run the existing instruments, with, which includes the synthesis toolkit, SDK toolkit, and other, um, many other instruments, which are very useful. Uh, you could do scripting in Make which is very helpful. You can also use Perl or Python as a front end to it. And um, it's compatible with Max, PD, iOS, Android, Open Frameworks, and Unity Game Engine. By which I mean that uh, there's been versions of this software created that can um, you can use as a plugin within Max. For so you have um, and for my inter other interactive works, I like to work a lot with Max using um, RTC Mix. In this case, I'm using the URTC Mix for the unique game engine uh, in the virtual reality version. Okay, a little bit back to the mode. Um, So these are just some, um, the Mesh 2D algorithm. 
which uh, these are out of Julie Smith's paper, Diane's paper from a while back, and it gives you an idea of the wave dispersing outward on the mesh structure like a flexible metal sheet. Okay, here's a sound, just a, the kind of sounds that you get from this instrument. Okay. I think I talked about the advantages of RTC mixes, the flexibility of use. Um, that you can use the command line version for things like the internet performance, or you can use the plug-in version for Max, MSP, and things like this. I've done iOS programming with RTC Mix. Um, it's free software, which is nice, and open source. So you can de devise your own code based on it if you like. Um, Algorithmic programming is easy to do in scripts, and you can build instruments if you know C++ in ways to make your own uh, things. Okay, now, um, for we have not built the installation yet. That's still in progress. We need to get a grant for the funding. But um, the Unity 3D version is uh, semi-working now, and it seems like the virtual reality version allows exploration of the structure without moving the actual physical installation. It's kind of uh, interesting compositionally to think about a non-linear approach because, of course, the, the person who's interacting with the installation in VR can uh, move anywhere. You can't predict the way that that is going to be. So you have to sort of do a meta-compositional practice, which means um, think about any possible decisions that the person might make and allow for any of those to uh, be possible. So it gives kind of an experimental aspect to composition. Um, using RTC mix, the parameters of the user's movement and the spatial structures can be um, reflected in the sonic changes. So there are di direct connections, you can trigger events, you can change parameters of sounds because of users' actions within the virtual environment. Um, it seems to me that this is a game composition that can provide a new mode of composition, musical composition with an active participating listener. Okay, so I'm going to go to the video of the one run of the Yubi game, which um, I think will be a little safer than trying to run it. The model is absolutely huge. <laughs> I'm not sure I have enough space to run it, but I will show you a video of, of the um, moving through the installation. Maybe take any questions now about this project before I to move on to any other project, any other uh, 
said that Unity 3D yeah, is, is it uh, the free software? The Unity 3D what? I'm sorry? Unity 3D uh, as you yes. use the, the program that uh, physical modeling synthesis. Right. right. No, yeah, actually, I'm, uh, no, I was using uh, the Gilcom's uh, model. Is, uh, actually, it's uh, pay, uh, pay and program and it's uh, very expensive and uh, I, I don't use any more uh, upgrade. Uh, so my, uh, I have to say, the, my last works uh, uh, doesn't work anymore. But, uh, no, I'm thinking about uh, uh, to remove, uh, not to remove, but uh, to, uh, to change the uh, is it possible? Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what you're doing, but I like it very much. It's really not that hard to learn, and there's excellent documentation available. So I think I, I would say it would probably be a great choice. Um, the sound is a little limited, but um, if you get interested in RTC Mix, that would fully um, expand yeah. your sound capabilities. Yeah, I'm sure it's, uh, sound is very, very, very similar as, uh, you know, it comes to the What were you using before? Uh, model is, uh, it is uh, the other program of a physical program. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much for your impressive report on the project. Uh, I, have, I could follow what you have shown about the uh, using processing yes. and the movement of each dot and the structure. I could follow visually, but when you say uh, it can be adapted to uh, sound uh, synthesis patterns, but I still do not get the uh, uh, correspondence between the structure, physical structure, and perceptive yes. point of view of sounds. Uh, you mean when you saw the video? Yeah, uh, video, oh yeah, you have shown. It's not very obvious. It's too randomized right now. That's one thing I want to make it more directly mapped so that when you hit a certain point in the structure, it becomes clear that that's where you are sonically. Um, right now, it's it's a little bit vague. And, and yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, what you're doing is not a direct mapping from the uh, structure and perceptive point of synthesized sounds, but there rather physical points. sound yeah. parameters, right? What you're doing is, so as a result, uh, what you get as a sound is not something that we could understand as a perceptive point of view. Is that right? Um, right now, it does not. There are a couple things that the localization is not working for the sound to be associated with the actual um, piece of the structure that it's supposed to be associated with. So it is some events are being triggered by sound by um, physical structures in the installation, but. Um, right now, it's not obvious because the, the localize isn't working, so I need to get that to work. But it will be mapped more clearly. So uh, do you think yes. that it can be possible to directly map from oh, yes, absolutely. the passive yes, view? Yes. So that's sure. probably all the users yeah. wish in. There's a function in Unity that allows you to trigger um, an audio component for a, a thing, an object. So. Um, it can be when when it's struck or whatever, it, it, a sound can play at that point. Now, I did some shortcuts for this project because it was um, you can't tell anyway. The problem is that unless you localize the sound, you can't really tell that it's coming from a particular object right now. <laughs> so, but that will be easily fixable. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So. I have some other demos, but I don't think we have time to play other demos that show the specifically localized sounds. Any other questions on this? Or should I go on? Yeah, I think you can work. Okay. So this is, um, like I said, kind of a new project, but it, it's uh, one of the more interesting projects that I think I've worked on in a long time. So, um, we're going to... Okay, so the next... Um, this is an older piece, and it's a... I hope you can see the whole slide here. Because I'm not seeing my slides very well. Something changed. Okay. Okay, 
and we can talk about a piece uh, from Australia. This is the second piece in a series of pieces that I've done from big recording sampling trips that I've taken. The first one was from Uganda. I went to Africa on a teach and tour sojourners uh, program that allowed me to do safaris in Africa and do a lot of teaching in various schools of all types in Uganda. It was a really wonderful program. Um, that was a few years ago. Uh, most recently, I went to Australia. I got very, I got extremely interested in the environment and concerned with recent actions. The Great Barrier Reef is basically dying, and it needs. It's going to take a lot of concerted effort to save uh, many natural, uh, uh, well, much wildlife and everything in, in our world. So. Um, I, for one reason I wanted to go, I wanted to just see all of these things that Australia has, um, the Great Barrier Reef, the Danger Rainforest, and the Outback. But I also wanted to see if I could do anything to raise awareness about these um, things. And also there's another project that I'm involved with, is the Sonic Refuge Project, to make sonic environments based on natural sound or other sounds, which are kind of refuges in our crazy chaotic world, to allow people to become more Contemplative. It's a healthy thing, sort of like a meditation. So, for all of these reasons, I went to Australia and I did a lot of recording. Um, the Great Barrier Reef was the first place that I went, and I had to learn how to snorkel so that I could record underwater and do some video recording, which I didn't end up using in this piece because it's all audio, but it was a very life changing experience to see the reef and experience it. Um, so there's just a couple pictures from here on the sailing ship out to do some snorkeling on the inner reef. <clears throat> Here's the outer reef on a different uh, wavelength tour. Just phenomenal uh, experiences. Okay, here's some coral. The brown stuff is fairly healthy. The staghorn that's kind of getting white here is a bit um, bleached from the overheating oceans right now. It was interesting to see that. Um, okay, so then I went to the Daintree Rainforest, moving up in the Queensland area of Australia. I took some river cruises. This is a crocodile. Mossman Gorge, where I got some amazing rushing water sounds. This is an actual a cassowary. I don't know if you've even heard of this it's, uh, animal, but it's a large bird that's very rare now. And it's, it's quite beautiful. And um, I managed to see, many Australians have never even seen this, but I was lucky enough to see it. So I thought I would play. This is a, a cassowary walking towards people, and they are walking back very quickly because it's about four feet tall and dangerous. Um, and then the outback. I was in uh, three different places Uluru, which is an Ayers Rock, a very sacred site for the Aboriginal people, and Katajuta, another beautiful set of rocks, and King's Canyon. So this is King's Canyon, and okay, so this is not a, a video piece, but I do have other pieces based on video. This particular piece is um, for people to experience making, creating sound environments from these natural recorded sounds. And it's a laptop orchestra piece for that reason. So I usually have about four people, anywhere from four to seven is the most people who ever performed this piece. Um, I think one of the more interesting performances was in Stony Brook, uh, where we had seven pieces and seven speakers pointing out across the audience, which gave it a real depth of sound in the space. Um, but anyway. We're using RTC Mix Processing. Uh, we're either doing playing of sound files with or without reverb, or granulated layers of playing back sound files. And then you could add various processing, including stochastic granular synthesis, filter sweep, which is this bi-quad time-varying filter, and comb filtering. And this is a performance uh, with Timothy Norica. He actually added the didgeridoo to one of the performances. Um, and these are two students who are 
holding iPads, you can actually run Mira. I don't know if you're familiar with Mira, but Mira runs, and if you have a Max patch on your computer and you network connect your iPad to your laptop, you can run your interface on uh, an iPad, which allows you to be able to use the sensors in the iPad or uh, walk around the room while you're performing or anything like that, which is nice. So we did that at Cincinnati and some other places. Here's the max patch. How much time do we have? How much time do we have? Um, Ten minutes. Okay. All right. Then I'm not going to demo the max patch. Um, because I do want to play this other piece. Okay. Another piece, um, aside from the laptop orchestra pieces I've been involved with, are um, some work I've done with Esther Lamnack, who is a wonderful performer. She plays both clarinet and terragata, which is this beautiful Hungarian instrument, single reed instrument. And it has it doesn't have keys, so you can control the microphone inflections. And um, so the compositional process was we both composed the piece. Okay, I'm not just the composer ready for her, the performer, but she likes to create her own part, and I've worked this way with some people who could do it. Uh, very successfully. So we both developed materials in exchange and created a piece over several years of time and many rehearsals. Um, and we decided to use a, Roman, a Hungarian folk melody as the basis of it. So you hear that in the beginning of the piece. And um, there's some granular synthesis too. <laughs> oh boy, I guess we'll have to play an excerpt. <laughs> so, I'll play some uh, granular synthesis. So this is that's the Tiragata playing a down up figure, and this is our some of my granular synthesis operations. <laughs>
Ah, great. Uh, is yes. that different from the kind of idea? Why well, say it's stochastic? Uh, I, it's not just random, it's changing probability. So let me show you my, um, my software does, the technique of course is brains and everybody probably knows that, um, you're just making, but when I do stochastic, what I'm doing is, um, I have four values for each, um, parameter. Okay, so there's a midpoint, which is the prefer, usually the preferred point. And then there's the range values, the low and the high. So, for example, if you're working with frequency, you know, you can have 400 hertz as the preferred value, and then up to down to 100, and then up to 900. Or if you're working with sample sound, that could be a transposition level. And then there's an amount of preference. So, in these programs, you can say I want to prefer, so most of the grains are one around one value, or it's a very wide distribution, and it just gradually um, goes toward the ends of the ranges. So you have all that control. And then on top of that, you have two values to move between. So you have two probability distributions between which you move over the course of a sonic event. Okay? So like it could start with frequencies, I've got a slide for this. Like see, um, in this case, your zero distribution is 100 to 300 and the preference is 200 hertz. In this one, the second distribution is around 400 hertz is the preferred point. Much steeper curve here, so more of the grains are coming in right around 400. So you have um, over, say, the range of whatever the time event is, you can move between this distribution to that distribution. So you, you know, you have two levels of, there's a lot of degrees of freedom in this, so it's pretty, it's pretty, stochastic and flexible, it's not just random. Random can be very cool too, but um, it just depends on what you want. What I like is to make these sculptural, gestural changes over time, and so this is one way to get that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Christine. Yeah, thanks. So both frequency domain and also temporary domain too? Yes, it's the grain rate, the four parameters that are used in the sampling one is the rate, the duration and the location and the frequency. Actually, this is for synthesis. And then for sampling, it's grain rate, duration, amplitude, and transposition. So that's just the way I program it. You could program it any way you wanted, but yeah. So do you, are you talking about working max that you're doing? Well, for when I'm doing this, I write by uh, using C code or something. Oh, do you? Okay. From the basic point of view. Ah, great. Okay. Cool. えっと、この時間ですので、もしあれば最後にもう少しだけ質問えっと、受け付けますが、いかがですか？あ、OK。あ、Thank you very much。Thank you very much。